You don't really know much about Halloween. Hello and welcome to another unboxing video. I am your host Joel. I'm one half of the Newly Duds and today we have just kind of a random pick em up kind of thing with uh, stuff from various sites. So not any particular thing, just a random unboxing of some new things that I got that I thought maybe you'd be interested to find out more about. Now if you want to know more about the Newly Duds, uh, you can go to thenewlyduds.com. That is our main site where it will provide you with information about the two blogs that we write, our podcast, our TV show that's on four different channels, which I'll put the information up here for you to see if you'd like to check that out, Dollar Store Drive-In, half an hour chat show where we talk about movies that we find at the uh, Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, um, various places that we find, anything under five bucks we've never seen before that's, you know, horror, thriller, sci-fi, and uh, as well as on the YouTube channel here where you're at currently. Welcome, by the way, if you're new and if you're returning, thank you for coming back. Uh, you can find our other unboxing videos, Sinister Snacks, Coffinated, uh, Follow Us Around videos, um, Code Orange, you know, just anything kind of on the spooky side, that's where we fall. So uh, for this video, I've got four new things that I just picked up and a good cross-section. So the first thing I got uh, for my birthday from my lovely wife is 2004's Torque, which if you've never seen this, think... Um, the Fast and the Furious, but with motorcycles, and quite a bit more weird motorcycle fights. It's a fascinating little piece of cinematic history that is a lot of fun. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought this was just kind of bad, crazy. Uh, pardon the language there, I'll have to edit that out. Um, but I kind of fell in love with it because it's just so bizarre. So the basic plot of this film is that a biker returns from Thailand to set things straight with his girlfriend. Uh, one gang leader wants him uh, to for delivery of uh, two motorbikes filled with crystal meth, and another gang leader wants him for murdering his brother. So he's basically being uh, sought after by two individual gang leaders for two separate reasons. Uh, this was directed by Joseph Kahn, who has done lots and lots and lots of music videos, which you can tell if you watch the film. You can see it's very much a music video style kind of uh, cinematography. Uh, and a movie called Detention, which if you've never seen it, it's a very strange kind of horror movie that kind of crosses some genres, kind of a Don coscarelli s sort of thing, and some TV stuff. Uh, this stars Martin Henderson, which you may remember from uh, X, the Ty West uh, first part of the uh, Maxine trilogy. Uh, he was in the 2002's The Ring, which is far better than it should have been. Gore Verbinski knocked it out of the park with that retelling of uh, the original Ringu, what started the whole franchise and kind of brought J-horror to the general populace for a while there in the early 2000s. Uh, this also stars Monet Mazur, which I think is how you say her name, who was in Mystery Men, uh, underrated kind of dark superhero movie, uh, and The Good Guys, which was a, a TV series that should have lasted longer with Bradley Whitmore and Colin Hanks, which if, if you know, if anybody knows me, you know that I'm a fan of Tom Hanks and Colin Hanks as well. Fun show. Uh, just a little bit of trivia that I had jotted down here. Uh, Joseph not, or I'm sorry, Joseph Kahn had stated in interviews that studios prevented him from creative control of the film. He wanted to make a dumb movie for smart people. Uh, this movie makes fun of the Fast and the Furious franchise. And as a matter of fact, in the opening scene, uh, street sign spins that says cars suck, which Okay. Um, and later on in the movie, uh, one of the characters says, I live my life a quarter mile at a time, which, you know, is what Dominic Toretto says quite a bit in the Fast and the Furious franchise, to which uh, another character says, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, which is a shame because of the Fast and the Furious franchise, I'm a fan of the whole thing. It's just ridiculous fun. If you've never seen it, check it out. Uh, anyway, so this one has seen some better days. Uh, this copy has probably been sitting in a warehouse somewhere for a while. There's not you know, much to it. Uh, and I'm finally giving it a home. It's going to go on the shelf and be loved 
for what it is, which is just a good, fun popcorn flavor. My wife got me that because she knows how much I like that. So um, the next thing we've got here is Monster from Green Hell. There you go. Uh, this is from 1957, which I love B-movie um, monster movies from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and on. Um, and I recently did a piece that took me over a year to do, which is the first part of a, hopefully a trilogy, in which I put 100 different characters in uh, this piece that um, has just kind of taken off. And it, if I have any left over after we have that, an upcoming event we're going to be at called the Witches Market, which I'll put the information up here if you want to come check us out. Uh, the video may not be up in time for you to see it, but if we have any left over, I may put them up somewhere to sell if anybody's interested, but I'll also put that image up here for you to see. So in this film, uh, a scientific expedition in Africa investigates wasps that have ex been exposed to radiation and mutated into giant killing monsters. Now, I've already watched this since I got it. Typically, when I do these unboxing videos, I used to just show the film already in its package, and I wouldn't get into the interior. But uh, I really couldn't wait to see this one. I've been It's been on my list to watch for a long time. Uh, this was directed by Kenneth G. Crane, who did Manster, which, look it up. He won't be, he won't be uh, sorry, and uh, Half Human. Uh, this movie stars Jim Davis, who uh, you may know from The Choir Boys, which was recently featured on the Video Archives podcast uh, with Quentin Tarantino and Roger Avery and Gala Avery. Um, and he was, did a lot of TV and, and, and quite a few other movies as well. Um, the budget on this was a million dollars, which is kind of big for a B picture. Uh, no pun intended, since it's about giant killer wasps. So again, uh, packaging is kind of minimal. There's a, a nice little booklet in here that uh, gives you some kind of history on the film, including, you know, some poster art, uh, some some images, and just, you know, just kind of a nice breakdown of the film, which if you're kind of a, um, a cinephile who likes to know as much as you can about the films that you're watching, uh, it's a nice little extra bonus thing along with the extra features on the disc. So if you've not seen this one, it's not the best, but it is certainly worth checking out uh, as something that's kind of interesting. Uh, now we have Dr. Jekyll versus the Werewolf. This one is from 1972. Uh, this is a Paul Nashi film, which the plot is that Paul Nashi returns as El Hombre Lobo for the sixth time as he searches for a cure to his full moon madness by visiting the grandson of the infamous Dr. Jekyll. Uh, now, this was directed by Leon Klimovsky, who is known for Vengeance of the Zombies, which is on my list to watch at some point, Mean Mother, Good thing with uh, Al Adamson, uh, originally called El Hombre Que Vino del Odio, which uh, that one is in the Al Adamson box set, which is on the shelf. I did this because I, I'm a fan of all things Al Adamson. I know that, as I mentioned, this stars Paul Nashi, who he's played the character that's in this film, Valdemir Daninsky, in 12 films. Uh, again, this was the sixth in the series, so this was halfway through uh, the entire run of that character, which he loved so much. Uh, which, if you can't tell, you know, he's the werewolf. Um, this also stars Shelley Corgan, who was uh, in Around the World with Fanny Hill, which you may have heard of if you're a fan of, of kind of British, uh, I want to say like sexy films. I don't know what else to call it at the moment. And uh, Four Flies on Grey Velvet, which is kind of a notorious giallo film. Uh, I couldn't really find too much trivia out about this. This is one of the first of the uh, Paul Nashi films that I picked up from, uh, this is a Mondo Macabre release. They don't do much here in terms, at least with this release for uh, packaging, but it's all about the movie. And I have been uh, fascinated by Paul Nashi and his career, um, specifically Blood Beats, which I believe I said that right. It, not Beast, it's Beats. Uh, that is just kind of notorious. And I'm starting to kind of build my collection. And this one kind of was, uh, kind of the foundation. I had one other film before this that I got uh, through Vinegar Syndrome, and that's a tale for another time. So um, I think I may have talked about that one before, actually. And finally, we have The White Buffalo from 1977. I am a huge Charles Bronson fan, and I have a large collection on DVD, had some stuff on VHS, uh, did a deep dive way back when I first came across Death Wish, and I watched 30, like 33 films in 30 days um, and was literally watching one a day, sometimes two. And so it just was a thing. 
This is one as of the few that I had not seen from his filmography, which he has a huge filmography, and I'll put the total here. I want to say it was just shy of 200 films, uh, or credits, I should say, to his name before he unfortunately passed away. And now um, Robert Bronzy has taken up the mantle because he looks just like him. And uh, I've been following Robert Bronzy's career because who doesn't want more Charles Bronson? So this is about um, the closing of 1874 in which a haunted, dying Wild Bill Hickok teams up with a grieving crazy horse to hunt a murderous albino buffalo. Now this one kind of falls into the horror category. Um, since I haven't seen it yet, I can't say whether or not that's 100% accurate. I have seen clips from it and it just looks phenomenal, like just a fun time. This was directed by Jay Lee Thompson, who is uh, one of my favorite directors from the 70s. Uh, he's known for Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, part of the original uh, run of the films, which is my favorite in the series. Of course, the original is fantastic, but that one is, is my favorite. Um, and a bunch of other Charles Bronson films. They worked together quite a bit. Uh, Charles Bronson himself is known for the Death Wish series, as I mentioned. Uh, the Family of Cops series, which is a kind of a later uh, action sort of. It was a TV thing with Angela Featherstone. If you've not seen it, they're a good way to kind of pass a Saturday afternoon. This also stars Jack Warden, who you may remember from Injustice for All, uh, All the President's Men. And just a, if you see his face, you're like, oh, I know that guy. Uh, this was Charles Bronson's final Western, which he did a lot in his career in which he played uh, a lot of different characters, including some that really aren't the best thing nowadays. You know, we, we want to have representation that's appropriate. And back then, they didn't care. Uh, so <clears throat> unfortunately, some of those do exist out there. So this is a Kino Lorber release. Sorry about the ring light there. And in the inside, you've got the alternate cover, which includes the original poster art which is, is just a, a fun little fun little shot. So I'm very much looking forward to this. I haven't <clears throat> had a chance to watch it yet, but it is on my short list of things to do. Got to get that back in there because you know, I love the slip covers. So anyway, that is it for this haul. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And, and uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done one of these, so I'm a little bit out of practice. But today is Friday the 13th, so if you did not celebrate by the time you've seen this, do it now. Uh, it's kind of what we refer to in this household as the second Halloween. And uh, I guess that's it. So just remember that tomorrow is not guaranteed. So don't forget to unbox your heart. We'll see you next time. Happy Halloween.